People would say that I'm unlucky because I've had cancer twice and I've been hit by a truck. But strangely, if it hadn't have come along when it did, it would have been a very different outlook. I wouldn't have become a world record holder. I certainly wouldn't be preparing to stand on the start line with some of the best endurance bike riders in the world. <laughs> Lila refers to Freddy as Freddy, Mum as Mum, and I'm Man. I know like, I travel a bit and stuff, but Man. Welcome to hell. I'd love to be the first Brit to win Race Across America. It's a huge race from one side of America to the next. It is the world's toughest bike race. I'm either going to fall over dead or I'm going to cross the finish line. To qualify for Race Across America, I'm going to do Race Across the West. It's 930 miles of relentless riding. To qualify, we'll need to complete it within three days, 20 hours, with little to no sleep. This is probably going to be the toughest ride I've ever done. These mountains and this desert, this heat's a killer. But I don't want to get to a certain point in my life where I wonder if. Um, he thinks that we should be doing 10 hours on the bike and then 45 minutes sleep and then straight back out again. We moved to Portugal because of training. Yeah. It's one of the best places I could get myself in condition. Yeah, 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 fine, okay. At the moment, my life is 70, 80% riding a bike and 20, 30% family. I'll be two minutes. It's difficult, but I've been so obsessed by Race Across America. Some of that is people looking at data that we got from the seven day world record and saying, if your heart rate is that low and you can maintain that speed, you could win it. He's driven, he's focused. He decides he's gonna do something and he just goes for it. There's nothing that's gonna stand in the way. There've been a lot of sacrifices. We've sold our house back in the UK. Um, I sold my business. The bike came on honeymoon with us, so that kind of says how important it is. <laughs> when I was younger, I'd never dreamed about being an elite athlete. That was just a dream too far, really. I grew up in Northamptonshire in England. Being young had its challenges. School for me was horrible. I hated everything about it. I just never settled in. I never had any real friends. So I stopped going to school. Mum would get a phone call saying James isn't in school. And she'd go, yeah, he is, I've dropped him off. And then she'd go and check and she'd be like, the bike's not here, it's gone. At 11 years old, I bought my first mountain bike. That was my first experience of real freedom. At 14, I left school. I think it was the stubbornness of, I'm going to be all right. Paul, that needs to go in the RV, because if I get off the bike, have a shower and sit down for a couple of hours, that's what I'm putting on. Right, we won't need that then. But I want it there in case I do need yeah. it. <laughs> My team, there's not many people in this world that give up three days of their life to sit in a car in <laughs> 45 degrees to watch somebody else ride a bike. You get down there as soon as you can and then you're chilled then, aren't you? Yeah. They're people that know me, they know my body, they know how I ride. I'd do anything for them and I know they'd do anything for me. Right, well, I need to put some kit on. Race Across West is a crazy <laughs> challenge and it's non-stop. That's the hardest thing about it. This adds challenges that most of us would never have to endure. Sleep deprivation, the heat, the mental side bit is the thing that, that breaks most people. But James knows how to suffer. You can't fathom how somebody can go from where he was to where he is now. Bearing in mind I left school at 14 and was told I'd never achieve anything. By the time I was 22, I'm living in my own house, driving a nice car and earning good money. As soon as I went into a state agency, I lost touch with cycling. Didn't even own a bike. I was very materialistic. I don't think I would like that person if I met them now. But my big wake-up call came later on. 
I got admitted to Walsgrave Hospital with back pain, really. Two days later, they told me we found an 11 and a half centimetre abnormal mass. We think it's cancer. Four surgeons spent six hours at midnight on a Friday trying to save my life. If I hadn't have been as young as I was and as fit as I was, they'd have put me in the corner and made me comfortable. I weighed just over six stone. They'd brought my bowel out onto the surface. I'm 28 years old and I've got my mum wiping my It's not what anybody wants to be dreaming of. None of what had gone on before mattered anymore. This whole money train that I'd been on, you're laying there dying and none of that's gonna save you. And that was a huge learning curve for me. My strap line is one step at a time and that came from that process of recovery. I couldn't move my legs, but I could wiggle my toes. Then slowly being able to lift my head up. Every day you try and make a small improvement And how I got back on a bike was, in all honesty, there was a bike in the corner of the, the house and one day I picked it up and went down to the local reservoir and I rode a bike. The winds in what hair I'd got at the time and just felt alive. The bike helped me massively. The people that you meet, the places you go. It was never a cycling career at that point, but I realised then that on a bike I fit. And that comes from riding with pro riders who turn around and go, I'm not riding with you over five hours because you're just an engine. James Golding has confronted everything cancer's thrown at him with courage. But James fought back, and when he got the all clear, he set himself a challenge to raise £100,000 for Macmillan, deciding to cycle all the way across America. I just heard a loud noise and... Next thing I know, I wake up sliding down the tarmac. I was hit by a truck at 70 miles an hour. I'm back in hospital just over a year since I left. Am I going to be learning to walk again because I couldn't move? But it's been far worse before. If I've got better from that, I can get better from this. James not only returned to the States, he completed the three and a half thousand mile journey 10 days quicker than expected. The rides just got a bit bigger and then, and then all of a sudden you're starting to talk about world records. I think that was my first introduction to ramp. And from then it's just had this attraction to it, which I can't shake. Next up was James Bowling. This is going to be the toughest ride I've ever done. I've got to get to Durango, Colorado, and I've got to get there in three days, 20 hours, to qualify to race across America. Three, two, one. Good luck, James. Race across the West, perfect for James. He's a machine on a bike. He's a late comer to cycling, but his physical strength is having a low heart rate for a long time, which in cycling terms is pretty special. What's your heart rate doing? At 125. 125, that's a good keep of that, yeah? It's a big challenge to take up, but he's just a phenomenal athlete. He's in fourth place. We didn't know about that until just now, so that's pretty good. This will be the first event I've got other riders I'm competing against. Oh, right, I've got to go. And none of us stand on the start line to come last. Something called um, James Carradine. Mate, you've got to come back and got a problem with my time. 
James Golden's got nothing to prove to anybody. He shouldn't be here. In first place. What, in my category? No, in first place. He's been through some real <laughs> And I think the more you tell him you can't, he's like a child. He won't tell you that he can. He'll just go off and do it. You see that? I think he's got 56 miles and it's just gradually uphill and it's 115 degrees out there. Good. Good work, Jimmy. Looking good, good buddy. Keep Looking good. good. Looking great. And he's like a machine. Yeah. Your thought process whilst you're riding is all this stuff kind of whirring around. We've got 930 miles, three days, 20 hours. 930 miles. Are you going to sleep? When are you going to sleep? How long that's going to take? It's a cluster. You start to overthink this process, and, and, and ultimately, I've got a bike to ride and I've got to get to Durango, Colorado. I need to shut my eyes because I'm struggling to keep them open. That stage of the ride ah. where I question why. Without a doubt, the, the hardest 94 miles I've ever done. Really? Yeah, yeah that was <laughs> brutal, mate. That was. Because of the heat that you just endured through there, you come through there and average just 7.2 miles an hour. Yeah. So it's in. Six. Six, yeah. Everything I've been through in life led to here and it's punishing, but it's not the first time I've had to suffer. We got Freddie on his way and I felt in a really good place when I got a phone call from my surgeon. Cancer was back. In some respects, being told that I'd got another tumour was easy. The dark came two years after that. I couldn't cope. I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to ride my bike. There were some days when he would say, I can't carry on, I can't do this. And my rationale to that would be, you have to. Cancer, we could kind of deal with it. But when it's depression, it's actually almost worse. There were some very, very dark times. The turning point was Freddie had drawn a picture and the only person that wasn't smiling was Daddy. That was where I then started talking to somebody. What I learned was that if you're really not happy with something that's going on in your life, change it. Things won't change unless you make them change. The finish line is about 135 miles away. We have 14 hours to do. 135 miles. It's not impossible, 130 miles. The bike is magic. You can change your life on a bike. You can recover from an illness. You can start afresh. It will break you down. It will make you cry. It will make you the happiest you've ever been. James, you're third. Sorry? Third. We've got to finish now, haven't we? It's on a hill, though. It's a massive climb. That's a bit isn't it? mile descent after the top and then it's a seven mile climb and then a massive descent home. Home. People would say that I'm unlucky because I've had cancer twice and I've been hit by a truck. Hey, mate. Two months ago. But in hindsight cancer was probably one of the best things that's ever happened to me. Just over a mile buddy, just over a mile. Cancer was lucky because of what I learned. Half a mile bud. 
You can't let something that happens out of the blue control the rest of your life. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Welcome to Durango. <coughs> I really, really, really need to sit down. Well, did mate. You Thank did you. Did it, mate. You did it, mate. Yeah. We've got a lot of work to do. We have got a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. I think I might need a bit of a break after this, a bit of time off. What, from? Everything. Everything. <laughs> Race Across America is that thing that he's always played on his mind. And I don't think he's settled until he's done it. I don't think he's settled until he's won it. It's something that only a very, very small elite do it and do it well. I've no doubt that James will win this. It's just when. He's going to hate me for saying this, but he'll smash it. <laughs> but he will, I, I have no doubt. Cycling for James is his therapy. On a bike, he can just go. It's difficult to put how tough this is going to be into any sort of context, but I've got to do Race Across America. I don't like not achieving what I set out to achieve.